So Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Rasulillah. We're coming again on a family night, Alhamdulillah. Jazakum Allah Khair to the brothers and sisters who helped outside, the brothers who barbecued and got all that going for the community. Inshallah, you enjoyed it. And Inshallah, we can do it again. The more cooperation we have at these events, the more cooperation we have at these events, the more we'll do. So just keep that in mind. We're coming again with a series, a pattern to learn the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, Al-Quran. The words Allah spoke to Prophet Jibreel السلام, to bring to Prophet Muhammad وسلم. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Inna lillahi ahlina min nas He said, for mankind, Allah has His special people. The companions قالوا, من هم يا رسول الله? O Messenger of Allah وسلم, who are they? Who are they? Who are this special group? He said, هم أهل القرآن أهل الله وخاصته They're the people of the Qur'an, the people of Allah, and His special ones. So we have to learn the book of Allah. We constantly just do that in Ramadan. We want to do it every day of our life. So this is why we're continuing on this focus in this month that we are in, Rabi al Awwal, six months until Ramadan. Six months, less than six months. Now till the blessed month of Ramadan. So we always can be preparing ourselves like the Sahaba did. So as we recite to remind you, Allah said, وَإِذَا قُرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَانْصِطُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, when the Qur'an is recited, listen to it and be silent, so that you may receive mercy. So I don't want to hear or anything else. Sit and listen. Okay, so we'll have Brother Muhammad begin with the opening, inshaAllah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. So, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan, from shaytan. And this is what you say before you start reading any Qur'an. You always start with the isti'adha. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, entirely merciful to everyone and everything, even the disbeliever, even the bad doer, the corrupt person. Allah is still merciful to them, and then He's especially merciful to those who believe in His in His call, the call to Tawheed, to the oneness of Allah and His worship and lordship, in His names and His attributes. Allah is especially merciful to them. So this surah is called Surah Qaf. It is the first surah of the Mufassil section of the Quran. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, even though we don't do it, he would read, this was one of the options he would read with Surah Al-Qamar on Salat Al-Eid. Not just Al-A'la and Al-Ghashiya. He would read Surah Qaf and Iqtarabat, which is Surah Al-Qamar. So it shows you this elevation. And many times when he was on the minbar, giving the khutbah, he would recite Surah Qaf. That is the importance and the elevation of this Surah. So the first thing that was mentioned, Qaf, these letters are a miracle of the Qur'an. They're not the name that you can name somebody with. They're, they don't have a meaning that we know. They are only known by meaning to Allah, by the glorious Qur'an. So this glorious Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Allah said, Allah said what means verily, it is we who sent down this Qur'an and surely we will guard it from corruption. This is why not one letter of the Qur'an has changed since it's been revealed. In this ayah that was just recited, Allah says what means, nay, they wonder that there has come to them a warner. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa from amongst themselves. 
So the disbeliever, the disbelievers, they say this is a strange thing. They wondered at the wisdom behind sending a messenger who was a human being. Like why would Allah do something like this? They considered it strange. أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدًا Allah says what means when we are dead and have become dust, shall we be, resur- we re- shall we be resurrected? That is a far return. So again, they questioned, they wondered, how strange is it when we're dust and bones and dead? This is a far return that our bodies and everything would disintegrate. And then we would be brought back to life in our original bodies. Allah says what means we know that which the earth takes of them. Yani their dead bodies. And with us is a book preserved. Yani the book of decrees that keeps all of the records. بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ مَرِيجٍ Allah says what means nay, but they have denied the truth. They have denied this Qur'an when it has come to them. So they are in a confused state. They can't tell between right and wrong. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجَ Allah says what means, have they not looked at the heaven above them, how we made it and adorned it with lamps, and there's no rifts in it. So you see here Allah's power and ability over what is greater than the resurrection. Allah, He notifies His servants of His infinite power. Allah can do anything, everything. Without any tire, without any fatigue, without any defects in it. It would be perfect because Allah is the one who did it. And the earth we have spread it out, set thereupon mountains, Standing firm and have produced therein every kind of lovely growth, meaning plants. <laughs> An insight and a reminder for every slave turning to Allah, the one who believes in Allah and does righteous deeds, because Iman is not just I say the Shahada, Iman is not I just believe it in my heart. It must have righteous deeds with it to perform deeds of his obedience. And they're always begging Allah for pardon, for mercy, to, for, to, to be forgiven, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says what means, and we send down blessed water, rain from the sky, then we produce therewith gardens and grain of every kind of harvest that are reaped. And tall date palms with ranged clusters. This all is a provision for the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we give life therewith to a land that is dead. You see a land which is dead, it has no growth on it. But Allah can cause it to reap fruits that the people will benefit from. Thus will be the resurrection of the dead. Being resurrected from being dead to living, to be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودَ Denied before them. The pagans of Mecca who denied you, O Muhammad wasallam, denied before them were the people of Nuh, of Noah alayhi salam, and the dwellers of Ar-Ras, and the Thamud. وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطَ And Ad, 
and Fir'aun, Pharaoh, and the brethren of Lut, of Lot. And the dwellers of the wood and the people of Tubba, every one of them denied their messengers. So my threat to them for not following took effect. So in this is examples, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that if we do what the previous generations did, and disobey Allah, and disobey His Messenger Wasallam, then we are liable to that same destruction. Allah the Exalted, He warns the disbelievers of the Quraysh, and reminds them of the painful punishment and torment that He sent in this life on their likes, those who disbelieved before them. From them, yani we're not going to get into all of them, though was the people of Lut, the people of Lot alayhi salam. Allah, he, ex- he exalted, the Allah the exalted, He shook the earth beneath them and turned them into a reeking lake as stinking as the disbelief and the tyranny and the defiance of the truth they had. Allah destroyed them, the people of Lut. Why? Because they were upon homosexuality and the likes of this. And this is a threat that we see nowadays in our society and it's affecting our schools where now there's no difference between who goes into what bathroom. And there's no difference if you dress, if you're a male and you dress like a female, or if you're a female and you dress like a male, and the likes of these matters. So this is being taught as okay in the schools. Teachers being able to say, you can be whatever you want to be, yani boy or girl, mm-hmm. even if the person is a boy or the person is a girl, by the way Allah created them. So be mindful of this. Be mindful of this evil. Because the people of Lut salam and the other nations, they belied their messenger that was sent to them and so they were destroyed. (coughs) Were we then tired with the first creation? No. They are in confused doubt about a new creation. Yani the resurrection. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ So Allah says what means, and indeed we have created man, mankind, male and female, and we know what his own self whispers to him. We know what he thinks, what he plots, what he really believes. What happens deep down inside, you can fool the humans, but you cannot fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, and we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. His jugular vein runs in his neck, deep in the neck. So Allah is saying, we are nearer than him, to him, afwan, than his jugular vein. Meaning, by Allah's ilm, by Allah's knowledge. So Allah, he encompasses and watches all all of mankind's activities. This is part of his dominance over mankind. In the Sahih Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, In Allah Ta'ala, تَجَاوَزَ لَأُمَّتِ مَا حَدَّثَتْ بِهِ أَنفُسُهَا مَا لَمْ تَقُلْ أَوْ تَعْمَلْ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic Hadith, Verily Allah the Exalted has forgiven my Ummah of Muslims for what they talk to, or think about to themselves, as long as they don't utter it, they don't say it, or they don't implement it, they don't do it. And this goes back to the statement of Allah, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Meaning, his angels are nearer to man than his jugular vein. Meaning, Allah knows every time your heart beats, and every time your muscle contracts. Allah knows every single thing that happens to every single one of us, for all time, for everybody. And it's not for us to comprehend how, because this is Allah's grandeur, His majesty. So just know, Allah خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش. He created the heavens and earth in six days. Then He استوى على العرش. He ascended above His arsh, above His throne, in a manner which suits His majesty. This is how, this is where Allah is. Allah he is above his arsh. This does not limit him. This does not limit him in one bit. Allah, he said himself, this is where he is. Yet he said, we. 
me, my team of angels that I don't need, but I have assigned them to tasks and duty, duties, we are closer to you than your jugular vein. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّى الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدًا Allah says, and these are beautiful ayat about the recording angels and death that are coming up. Allah says what means remember that the two receivers, the recording angels, so every one of us has an angel over our right shoulder writing down our good deeds. And over our left shoulder, writing down our sins and our evil deeds. The two receivers, they receive each human being once they've attained the age of puberty. One sitting on his right, one sitting on his left, to note down all of his actions. Everything he says and does. Even if mom and dad don't see it, an angel is writing it down. مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Allah says, what means not a word does he or she utter or say, but there's a watcher by him ready to record it, ready to write it down. Subhanallah. Everything we say or do. There's no way we can tell Allah, يوم القيامة, I forgot. Did I really do that? I, didn't, I don't think I was there. None of it's gonna fly. None of it's gonna pass. Allah has everything written down by His angels. And He knows it even without them. Referencing back to the angels, just because of a beautiful hadith that comes to mind, the angel of the left, he writes down the bad deeds. Allah, He commands him, and يَرْفَعْ قَلَمَهُ That He lifts His pen up for six hours, giving you time to make tawbah, giving you time to ask Allah for forgiveness. And if you repent, then He doesn't write it. So this is, يعني, when Allah says, He's Ar-Rahim, He's Al-Ghafoor, and هُوَ قَابِلِ tawbah That He's the acceptor of repentance, the forgiver, when Allah says this, this is on a level and a degree we could never be as humans, even if you're the most forgiving of the humans, and the kindest of the humans. But Allah, He commands the angel of the left, lift up your pen when my servant, when my slave makes a sin. And you give them time to make tawbah. A tawbah tan nasuha, the sincere repentance. Where you go to Allah and you beg Him for forgiveness, and you're sorry you did what you did, and you vow to not do that sin again. And you hate, you regret that you sinned. And nadamu tawbah. Nadam, regret is tawbah. It is tawbah in and of itself. So that is from the previous one that I wanted to, to mention. For the ayah just uh, recited, and the supper of death will come in truth. This is what you have been avoiding. This supper of death, the stupor of death. Allah the exalted, He says that, O oh mankind, this is the supor of death that has come in truth. Now I have brought forth to you the certainty that you were disputing. People thinking that they may not meet the fate of death. This is what they've been avoiding, meaning this is the end you are trying to escape. Allah says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ Say that death, that which you're fleeing from, you're escaping. It's okay to go see doctors. It's okay to go to the hospital. It's okay to take medicine by our deen. But guess what? In the end, that death, if you're trying to escape it, so afraid of it that you don't think it can ever come if you seek this or seek that. It will find you. Then you're going to return to the knower of the unseen and the seen. And he'll tell you what you used to do. This is the death you try to flee from. There's no shelter, there's no refuge. When Allah wants it, it comes. There was a boy playing a soccer in Lathrop this past week. And he had a heart attack, a young boy. And they revived him as coaches. And they took him to the hospital and he passed away. He wasn't in a car that was speeding and maybe something happened. 
He wasn't sick. He didn't have cancer or some other illness. When death comes for you, it comes for you. You can be young, you can be old. You can be sick, you can be healthy. When Allah wants your soul, His soul back, He's taking it. And there's nothing we can do. And all we can do at that point is hope that we did enough good in this life that we can get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ And the trumpet will be blown. That will be the day where of warning had been given. The day of resurrection. When Allah commands the angel, which angel is it? No, no, no. Which angel has the trumpet? Say it loud. Israfil, mashallah. Good, good students. Alhamdulillah. Israfil, his lips... His lips are on the trumpet, waiting, waiting for Allah to command him to blow it. That day, as it was يعني, mentioned, the blowing of the trumpet, the fear that follows it, the death of everyone, then the second blowing of the trumpet and the resurrection, everyone coming out of their graves for the day where they will stand before Allah and there is no shade but Allah's shade. <clears throat> the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said in a hadith, how can I feel comfortable while the angel responsible for the trumpet has placed the trumpet to his mouth and lowered his forehead, waiting the command? Yani, we don't know what the angels look like. Mm-hmm. They definitely don't look like what you see in the store. This little thing that looks like a human with two wings and this and that. We only know what we know from evidence. But imagine that he's like this, his lips on the trumpet, waiting, waiting, waiting. For Allah to tell him, blow into it, and everything that is living will cease, except for, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Except the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exhausted is He, in all His majesty, will be what remains. So the Prophet wasallam he said, how can I feel comfort when I know that He will be commanded by Allah to blow it? They said, O Allah's Messenger wasallam, what should we say? He said, say, حَسْبُنَ Allah wa ni'mal wakil." Say it, everyone say it. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Wa ni'mal wakil. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. May Allah protect all of you, inshaAllah. This means, say, Allah is sufficient for us. Hasbi Allah is Allah sufficient for me. Allah is enough for me. Allah is all I need. And He is the best disposer of affairs. Whatever Allah wants for you is what is best for you. So know this, the companions repeated this saying, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil, Hasbi Allah. And they kept repeating this. A beautiful phrase. Tafaddal. Wajaat kullu nafsim ma'aha sa'iqu wa shaheed. And every person will come forth along with an angel to drive him and an angel to bear witness. Yani, every person has a sa'iq and a shaheed. An angel that will drive him to the gathering place where the people will gather. And inshallah, we will gather with the ummah of Muhammad wasallam. And then an angel to bear witness against him in regards to his deeds. There's no lying that day or saying, I forgot. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصُرَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ It will be said to the sinners, indeed you were heedless of this. Now we have removed your covering and sharp is the sight, sharp is your sight this day. It will all be now a new reality to them. They used to deny when they were living that maybe Allah existed. Or they used to deny that Allah was one. Or they used to deny that Allah is all I need to worship. Or they used to deny that He was the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Or they used to do such and such from the sinners who used to deny this meeting with Allah, but it will be clear on that day. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ And his companion angel will say, Here is the record ready with me. Again, the record of all we did. That book, it will be, even given, it will be given to you in your right hand or your left hand. Allah يَجْعَلْنَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ May Allah make us from the companions of the right who get our record with our right hand. 
القيا في جهنم كل كفار عنيد Allah says what means and it will be said both of you throw an order from Allah to the two angels throw into jahannam into the hellfire every stubborn disbeliever who disbelieved in the oneness of Allah who disbelieved in his messengers throw them into the hellfire man Throw into the hellfire every hinderer of good, someone who stopped good and stopped others from doing good. Sometimes you, you got to be aware, you might whisper to someone to not do something which Allah commanded them. You might be with a friend and he's saying, I want to pray and you're like, don't pray now, pray later. Or don't pray, we want to watch this game or finish this game or whatever it may be. This is in this manna'an lil khayri mu'tadin murib, a hinderer of good, a transgressor, a doubter. The angel will bear witness. Allah commands that the disbeliever will be thrown into the hellfire. And Allah states that the scribe angel, entrusted with recording the deeds of mankind, he will testify against him or her about the deeds that he or she did on the day of resurrection. Here is the record ready with me. هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ atid. Here it is prepared and completed. I didn't add for it. That angel will not say, يعني, I, I added some things to make you look better or to make you look worse. Nor did they delete anything from you. الَّذِي جَعَلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَأَلْقِيَاهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشَّدِيدِ who set up another ilah, another God with Allah, then both of you cast him into Jahannam, into the severe torment. His companion, that's a devil, that's a shaitan, will say, our Lord, I didn't push him to transgress. I didn't push him to be oppressive. I didn't push him to do evil deeds, but he himself was an error and astray. So the shaitan that teases you and tempts you to listen, to follow your desires, to go and commit that sin, saying nobody's gonna know, nobody's gonna find out about this, no one will do it. Allah will just forgive it for you. The one who's calling you to all of that, that shaitan that's tempting you with desire and lust, he's gonna abandon you and say, I didn't tell him to do that. That wasn't me to him. He did this because he wanted to do it. So he will abandon you. You cannot turn to him to blame him saying, he made me do it. You follow the shaitan, you will be the one responsible for it, not shaitan or not that devil himself. Allah will say, do not dispute in front of me. I had already in advance sent you the threat. I told you, I warned you, don't dispute with me. I warned you, if you do such and such. Just like in this life, you get a warning from your teacher, and another one, and then you get the punishment. You get a warning from your parent, then you get the punishment. You get a warning from society, the police or whatever. And if you do it or you break that, you get the punishment. Allah, He gave, that pun- he gave down that warning, so you cannot dispute or argue with Him, or make a deal. You can't ask to come back and live another life at that point. You won't be allowed it. Allah says, what means the sentence that comes from me cannot be changed. And I am not unjust in the least bit to the slaves. Abu Dhar, he, he, was quoted, he quoted the Prophet ﷺ as saying that... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu al-dhulm ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama, fala tudhalamu. Abu Dhar, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, so this is a hadith Qudsi, he said, O oh my slaves, I made oppression unlawful for myself, and I've made it unlawful amongst you, so do not oppress one another. Allah will not do us wrong. Allah will not wrong us or oppress us in any way. I will not wrong my slaves, it's a promise. But fair is fair. Good deeds and bad deeds will be weighed. 
If you followed the Qur'an and the Sunnah, or you followed bid'ah and innovation, it will be weighed. If you were upon Tawheed purely, or if you mixed in some shirk, shirk it will be weighed. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ Allah says what means on the day when we will say to Jahannam, to the hellfire, are you filled? It will say, are there any more to come? So Jahannam, after given inhabitants, it will ask Allah, is there any more? Is there any more? Upon this, Abu Huraira he narrates that he said, we were in the company of Allah's Messenger wasallam, and we heard a terrible sound, a loud terrible sound. Thereupon Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, do you know what that sound is? We said Allah and His Messenger وسلم, know best. He said, هَذَا حَجْرٌ رُمِيَ بِهِ فِي النَّارِ مُنذُ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا فَهُوَ يَحْفِي فِي النَّارِ الْآنِ حَتَّى انْتَهَى إِلَى قَعْرِهَا He said, shh. If we can keep the door to the sister's hall closed. Jazakumullah khair. This is a very important yani, lesson we're learning. To you, so you get some visual of Jahannam. So they heard this loud sound. The Prophet ﷺ, he told them, this is a stone that 70 years was thrown into Jahannam and it's been constantly falling and falling and falling and it's now just reached the base. Even if you go to the tallest mountain or building and throw a stone, it's not but seconds or a minute and it hits the floor and you think that's so high. 70 years, a stone thrown from this earth took till it hit the bottom of Jahannam. When we're thinking of its vastness, so we'll keep saying, Allah, is there any more that you have to put in here? Allah, is there any more you have to put in here? And the last one, I will say, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the people will be thrown into the hellfire and it will say, is there any more? Is there any more? هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ حَتَّى يَدْعَى قَدَمَهُ فَتَقُولْ قَتْ قَتْ Until Allah puts His foot over Jahannam and seals it, and He will say, enough, enough. Until Allah puts His foot, and this is not like our feet, but Allah does have a foot. He said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعَ الْبَصِيرِ There is nothing like Allah or comparable to Allah, and He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. We can't change these revelations of when Allah says face, hand, and foot. But we do say that it's nothing like ours or nothing like anything you can think of. But He will put His foot over the hellfire and seal it, saying enough, enough. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. And paradise will be brought near to the muttaqun, far, to the, those who have taqwa, far off. هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ It will be said, this is what you are promised. It is for those who are off to returning to Allah with tawbah and sincere repentance. And those who preserve their covenants from Allah. Reflect here. Those who are promised will get Jannah. Those who are, pro- those who are promised Jannah. If they are tawwab, if they... Repent to Allah. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who makes tawbah, repents from a sin, it's like they have no sin. Reflect how much Allah loves to accept forgiveness and give Jannah. So He called them sinners. So Allah is not expecting that we're perfect. But if we race to Him every time we do wrong and try not to repeat it, Allah will reward us inshaAllah. مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ We're getting to the last ayat, inshaAllah. Allah says what means, who feared the most beneficent, Allah in the ghayb, unseen, without seeing Allah, and brought a heart turned in repentance. This is what Allah wants to see from you. That your heart is always turning to Him, begging for forgiveness, trying not to do that sin again feeling sorry for what you did because it, dis- it was disobedience to Allah. It will be said, enter you therein in peace and security. This is the day of eternal life. Because Jannah is eternal. No illness, no fatigue, 
No old age, no anxiety, no depression, none of the suffering, none of the hardships, none of the trials that we have here. Jannah will be there forever and ever perfect for those who say what? For those who worship Allah without seeing Him. This is why Allah will call the people in Jannah to a day to meet Him, to see His face. Aina ibad al ata'uni bil wa lam yarawni. Where are my servants, my slaves, who used to worship me and be obedient to me, even though they didn't see me? This is the promise, the reward for them. There they will have all that they desire. Jannah, anything you want, it will be yours. And then we have more for them. That more is the glance to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many a generation we have destroyed before them, who were stronger in power than them. And when our torment came, they ran for a refuge in the land. Could they find any place of refuge for them to save themselves from destruction? Verily therein is indeed a reminder for him who has a heart or gives an ear while he is heedful. Remember our Prophet Sallallahu saying, uh, our Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam saying, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالًا وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ the day where wealth and sons will not avail, except the one who brings to Allah a clean, pure heart, clean from shirk, clean from shirk, from polytheism, and clean from nifaq, from hypocrisy. And we indeed, and indeed we created the heavens and the earth and all between them in six days, and nothing but fatigue touched us. So bear with patience, O Muhammad Wasallam, all that they say and glorify the praises of your Lord before the rising of the sun and before its setting. I want to mention this quick hadith. We'll read it in English because of the time. Jarir ibn Abdullah, he said, we were with the Prophet Wasallam on a full moon night. Yani, it was a clear night and the moon was full. He looked at the moon and said, you will certainly see your Lord. You will be able to see Allah, your Lord, as you see this moon. On a clear night with a full moon, is there any difficult to see it? No. You will see Allah as clear as you see that moon. He said, so if you can avoid missing, sleeping through, or business, if you can avoid missing any prayer before the rising of the sun, meaning Fajr, and before its setting, meaning Asr, especially those who, if you can avoid missing them, then do so. He mentioned this with the reward of being able to see Allah. Not missing Fajr, not missing Asr, not missing those two prayers. He said, if you can do that, then do so. The Prophet ﷺ then recited the following ayah, and that we just mentioned, and celebrate the praises of your Lord before the rising of the sun, and before its setting. فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحُ وَأَدْبَارَ السُّجُودِ And also, during a part of the night, to glorify and praise Allah, glorify His praises. يعني at مغرب العشاء And so likewise after the prayers of a sunnah, the nawafil, the additional prayers, glorify and praise and magnify Allah. وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ And listen on the day when the caller will call, call from a near place. يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ الصَّيْحَةَ بِالْحَقَّ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجِ The day when they will hear a sayha, a shout, a loud cry in truth, that will be the day of coming out. The day of coming out of the graves on the day of resurrection. 
Verily, we it is who give life and cause death, and to us is the final return. On the day when the earth will be cleft from off them, they will come out hastening forth and rushing. They will be there that will be a gathering quite easy for us. And this was the final ayah of the 45 ayat. Allah says what means, we know best, we know of best what they say. And you, O Muhammad Wasallam, are not a tyrant over them, forcing them to, to, to believe. But warned by the Qur'an, warned by this book, by my words, him who fears my threat. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa shahadu an la ilaha la anta astaghfirik wa atubu ilayk. This is the completion of the translation and a brief tafsir of Surah Qaf. Again, this is a surah that yani, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam would read many jum'as on the minbar on Friday during his khutbah. Because of, look at all of the concise uh, advice, the concise uh, lessons and learn things we can learn from them. So, Insha'Allah, yani we can take heed from what we learned. Again, we saw in this, the beginning of the creation, the resurrection, the return, the standing before Allah, the judgment by Allah, the reckoning, Jannah, Jahannam, paradise and the fire, Allah's reward, Allah's punishment, the lessons of encouragement and lessons of discouragement, Wallahu a'lam. Anything I said which was incorrect is from me and shaitan. Anything good I said is from Allah. And we praise Him and thank Him that we're able to gather like this. Mm -hmm. So right now, 